Welcome to the Unraveling the Scriptures channel. The narrative of Abraham, as recorded in the Bible, highlights him as the father of faith. This implies that all who are justified by faith in the Lord Jesus become his spiritual descendants. This connection occurs because the final fulfillment of the divine promise to Abraham is realized in Christ, who extends the blessings of salvation to all peoples of the earth. In addition to being recognized as the father of faith, Abraham is also mentioned in the Bible as a friend of God, highlighting the faithful relationship he maintained with the Lord. However, despite being a friend of God and a patriarch of faith, Abraham was not without imperfections, and his faith matured over time. Therefore, Abraham serves as a remarkable example for all who aspire to walk the path of faith, and it is his and his wife's story that we will explore in today's video. I appreciate it if you can express support by liking, subscribing to the channel and sharing this video. The Journey of Abraham, the Patriarch of Faith and his wife Sarah The meaning of the name Abram is, illustrious father, or, exalted father, which was given by his father Terah when he was born. Later, God Almighty bestowed upon him the name Abraham, which means, father of a great people. Previously, Sarah was called Sarai, which translated as, my princess. However, God also changed her name, designating her simply as Sarah, which means, princess. In the book of Genesis, chapter 12, God communicates with Abraham and makes significant promises. The Lord said to Abram, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you, I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you I will curse, and all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So, Abraham departed as per the Lord's instructions, with Lot as his companion. At the time of departure, Abraham was seventy-five years old. Taking with him Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, Along with all the possessions and souls they had acquired in Haran, they journeyed to the land of Canaan, where they eventually arrived. At that time, Abraham was considered young, as people typically lived to almost 200 years of age. He left Haran with his wife, the beautiful princess Sarah, and also took his nephew Lot, forming a large caravan. Abraham was a very wealthy and powerful man, a sheik. Few know that Lot was not actually Abraham's cousin but his nephew, the son of his brother Haran. Together, they set out for the land of Canaan. Due to a great famine in the land of Canaan, Abraham and his caravan headed to Egypt. Upon arrival, Abraham, fearing for their lives, said to Sarah, You are a beautiful and attractive woman. If I say that you are my wife, the Egyptians may kill me and take you from me. At that time, foreign husbands could be killed by powerful men in a city who desired to take their wives. Pharaoh's princes, upon seeing Sarah, considered her a breathtaking woman, setting her apart from all other women in Egypt. This likely sparked a hint of envy among them. The princes persuaded Pharaoh to take Sarah for himself and include her in his harem of women, separating her from Abraham. At that moment, God became indignant with Pharaoh and his princes, unleashing a massive plague upon the palace and the entire land of Egypt, affecting Egyptians, princes, and Pharaoh himself. In the face of the situation, Pharaoh summoned Abraham and questioned why he had not revealed that Sarah was his wife. Pharaoh ordered Abraham to immediately leave the land of Egypt. This narrative highlights God's profound love for Abraham and Sarah, as he reacted vehemently, sending plagues upon Egypt to ensure the liberation of his servant's wife out of love for her. Thus, Abraham and Sarah left Egypt and returned to the land of Canaan. After this episode, Abraham and Lot went their separate ways. Both were extremely wealthy, possessing a large amount of livestock and vast properties. However, the shepherds and servants of Abraham and Lot did not get along well. Lot chose to settle near the plains, close to the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, cities that were detested by God. During this time, an immense war broke out, involving four kings against five kings, a colossal and monstrous battle. In this conflict, they also faced the famous Nephilim, 
notably the giants of the Rephaim races Anakim and Emim, engaging in intense confrontations with these three races. These giants reached incredible heights of approximately 9, 13, 12, 16 and 19.68 feet, with a width of about 6.56 feet. After this episode, Abraham encounters Melchizedek, a priest of his god, and also a priest of the same god as Abraham. Melchizedek, the Canaanite king of the city of Salem, blesses Abraham, and the two have a significant conversation, sharing faith in the same God. They discuss the Almighty. Shortly after this encounter, God speaks to Abraham again, encouraging him and promising him a son from his wife Sarah, despite her being barren. God granted Abraham and all his descendants the entire land of Canaan. However, Sarah, being barren and unable to conceive children, began to feel great sorrow. Faced with this situation, she suggested to Abraham to lie with her maidservant, Hagar, in the hope of having a child. Hagar, Sarah's Egyptian servant, agreed to lie with Abraham, and thus Ishmael was born, a strong and courageous boy whose name means, God hears. Shortly after the birth of Ishmael, God spoke to Abraham in a theophanic manner in the oaks, where three angels appeared. Abraham and Sarah prepared a feast for the angels, who shared a meal with the couple. During the conversation, one of the angels announced that, despite Sarah's sterility, she would have a son. At this news, Sarah laughed, and the angel continued, Why did Sarah laugh? Why did she say she is too old to have a child? Is anything impossible for the Lord? Well, like I said, next year I'll come visit you again. And at that time Sarah will have a son. After these events, the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah occurred due to the widespread practice of sin in these cities. God, faced with prevalent corruption, decided to destroy the cities as an act of judgment. Lot and his two daughters were the only ones saved from the destruction of Sodom, however, Lot's wife disobeyed divine instructions, looking back, and God turned her into a pillar of salt as a consequence of her sin, for not closing her eyes. Later, Abraham moved to Kadesh and Shur, where he continued his journey as a pilgrim in the land, getting involved in conflicts. In this region, he encountered Abimelech, a powerful local king. Fearing for his safety, Abraham repeated the same mistake made in Egypt, claiming that Sarah was his sister. Abimelech, captivated by Sarah's beauty, took her as his wife. God, intervening in dreams, tormented Abimelech because of Sarah. Irritated by yet another incident of a man taking Sarah from Abraham because of her beauty, God ordered Abimelech to return her to her husband. This situation echoed the previous episode involving Pharaoh's princes, revealing that there is a appointed time for all things in our lives, as it was in the lives of Sarah and Abraham. After these events, the faith of Sarah and Abraham in God grew significantly. The Lord visited Sarah, and finally, she had the baby she had longed for, a beautiful son named Isaac. Sarah, once barren, exclaimed with joy, stating that God made her laugh, and all who saw her would also rejoice with her. The name Isaac, given by the angel of God, means, laughter, as Sarah laughed when the angel announced that she would be a mother even though she was barren. Thus, the beautiful and handsome Isaac, the long-awaited son of Abraham and Sarah, was born. Before Isaac, Abraham had Ishmael, but his desire was to have a son not from another woman given by Sarah but from his beloved wife. After the birth of Isaac, God wanted to test Abraham's total faithfulness and asked him to sacrifice his son. Abraham, a man of faith and obedience, went up to Mount Moriah with Isaac. In the anguishing moment of sacrifice, Isaac asked about the lamb, and Abraham confidently replied that God would provide. At the last moment, an angel cried out from heaven, praising Abraham's faith and preventing the sacrifice, providing a lamb for the sacrifice to the Lord. Isaac grew up as a young man of faith in God. The story of Abraham and Sarah teaches us that, even in delay, God has the best for us. No matter how long it takes, the Almighty Lord always has the best for each of us. We must trust, surrender our lives to the Almighty God, and believe that he will do the best. 
In the unseen, God will surprise us and grant us the best. The key is to trust and believe in what is to come, for the Lord will always surprise us with the best for us. Thank you for following the video this far, may God bless you, and I'll see you soon.